Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3 this morning. Thank you so much, uh, Mike and the praise team. It's uh, what, a, what a great, great work. And thank you, Jesus. Over the next couple months, we're going to look at a series of messages called The Same God. And we know and we believe as believers that our God is what is called immutable, unchangeable. That God never changes. And we're going to look at different stories. Uh, today, we're going to look at Adam and Eve. Next week, uh, we're going to look at Noah, Abraham, and move on into the New Testament about how the same God has always been and how he responds to all kinds of, of, of different um, situations. So aren't you glad that our God doesn't have to run for re-election every four years, right? <laughs> and aren't you glad that our God doesn't change at springtime and summertime and fall and winter? He's the same God. And ladies, you'll appreciate. Aren't you glad that our God doesn't get up on the wrong side of the bed in the morning, right? Our God is the same. And God's word testifies that, and as we live through our life, we understand that more and more. But here's what is also true. We also are the same throughout our life. Oh, we have different emotions, and we get up on the wrong side of the bed, and, and I, I do like spring better than winter, and... I do change in personalities and various things depending upon situations, but the truth of the matter is we're the same. We're all sinners. There's never been a day that I haven't sinned. There will never be a day that I, I won't sin. How does God merge those together? What does he do for us? How does he continue to love us? That's what we're going to look at. We know Hebrews 13 verse 8 tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So pray with me. God, I thank you this morning that we've been brought to stare at you and sing to you and remember that you are our everything. And God, just do whatever you will in this service. May, may we hear from you, Holy Spirit, in your name we pray. Amen. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 8 says this, Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, but about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat it or you will die. No, you will not die, the serpent said to the woman. In fact, God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and delightful to look at and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it and she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they both knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. We've heard this story many times in our life, or if it's the first time you ever heard that, this is at the very beginning of creation. And in Genesis chapter 1, it is a story of creation, that in seven days God created this, the heavens and the earth, and that he rested on the, on, on the seventh day. And then chapter 2 is somewhat looks like a remake of that, but really chapter 2 would be just narrowing it down to the main creature creations, God and Adam and Eve, and telling that story over again. And then we get to, to chapter 3. And sin had not yet entered this earth, but it is about to. The Bible says there was a serpent, the most cunning of all wild animals, 
almost all believers would understand this to be to be the evil one the devil himself let me remind you that that satan himself was a fallen angel who who in in heaven tried to overthrow god and one third of the angels joined in with him and and we, we are taught that he did that mainly out of pride or out of jealousy, trying to overthrow God. And now he's down here on this earth. And he's about to get Eve and Adam to sin. Notice something that, that Satan does. is It says he's the most cunning of all the wild animals. Look with me at... At verse 1, it says, Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. Pay attention to that word, Lord. He said to the woman, Satan said to the woman, Did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? He left out the word, Lord. Go on again. The, the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, but about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, Now Eve left out the word, Lord. You must not eat of it or touch it or you will die. You will not die, the serpent said. In fact, God, once again, left out Lord God. And you go on and on again, and you see that Satan never added back again the word, Lord. But then you get to verse 8. And as the writer is writing, it says, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God again. So what's the difference in that? Well, simply, simply put, the, the, the word God is really would be just about a religion, about there's some God somewhere, something's out there. But this word Lord is an incredibly big theme we would use the word Yahweh, even though it's not a, a, an exact word to use here. The word Lord means that he is in intimate control of all areas. In other words, he's not just a God, as Bette Midler said years ago. That was a singer, young people, by the way, okay? Long before, about Elvis time, a little bit Elvis after Elvis. Okay. Bette Midler said, in the distance, God is watching over us. That's just a God form is out there. But we worship the Lord God, the Yahweh God, the Savior God, the intimate God. Satan tries to leave that out, and that leads us to sin. So he tempted Eve, and Eve took some of the fruit, and, and so did Adam, and sin came upon this earth, and our God is the same, and us humans are the same, and we will be till we leave this, this earth. So how does God respond to us when we sin? That's what I want us to look at today. What is the same way that God still responds to us as he did to Adam and Eve? Three questions. Adam, three questions God asked Adam and Eve today. Look at verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So the Lord God called out to the man and said to him, Where are you? That's the first question that, that God asked us in our life. Where are you? Now make sure you understand, God knew where Adam and Eve is. This it wasn't his first time that he decided, Hey, I'm going to walk around this garden tonight and, and try to find these people. I believe it was an ongoing walking and relationship that he had with Adam and Eve at this time. But the difference was that Adam and Eve wasn't where they had always been. They were now hiding from God. Hey, God knows where we are. And he knows why we hide from him, and he knows where we are hiding. So that first question is still an appropriate question that God asks us, where are you? 
So here's a question. Are you glad that God is walking by you right now? Or are you hoping that he doesn't see you right now because you know what is going on in your life? The great statement is God is still seeking sinners. Right here, in in Adam and Eve's day, he came looking for them. The Bible talks about the prodigal son and how the, how the father figure continues to look for the son. The, the Bible talks about over and over uh, again that, that others are continually being looked for by, by God. The 99 sheep are left behind so that one can be found. The woman at the well was the first one that Jesus went to and and, and shared that he was the the Messiah. The thief on the cross who deserved to be on the cross was remembered and is in heaven today. The Holy Spirit that dwells within us as believers, or if you're not a believer, my friend, that is convicting you of your sin and showing you of your need continues to seek after us. When we think in our life that God has to be done with us, he is finished with us. I've blown it for the last time. I've messed up the last time. I've tried to stop this a thousand times. I've hurt my family so bad this time. is still seeking after us he never leaves us he never forsakes us Adam and Eve had never sinned they had everything perfect and and what did they do they sinned and what did God do he came looking for them now men it's interesting that that God asked Adam this question even though Eve did lead the way here, and men, I think it's important, dads, fathers, I think it's important to ask, where are you leading your family? Your family will ultimately make their own decisions, but God has called us to lead our family the right way. Are you dads, are you fathers, are you men hiding from God? It's a wonderful thing to have a godly wife. I'm thankful for my godly wife, and I trust you are too. But God calls us to be the ones, just like he called Adam and said, where are you? Adam said, I I, I was hiding, but God still looked for him, and it's still true today. The same God still looks for us. This last weekend, Sherry and I uh, turned to uh, just turned the channel and came to a, a veteran celebration in Washington D.C. of the M- Memorial Day celebration. Second time we saw it, and I hope we can watch it every year. And they just have different people come on and tell stories about different soldiers and and their heroic efforts that they had. And then there's some beautiful music that is that is played there in Washington D.C. and this one man told a story that a medic had been there and he was looking and helping and he always went to the front line to go and protect and help people and he was so brave and he did that for years but finally he went looking and searching for that one who needed to be healed and he sadly was shot to death. Friends, Jesus is still looking for you. He knows where you're at. He's for you. He's for us. He knows that sin. He knows that lifestyle. He knows that choice. And the same God still is coming for us. But there's a second, there's a second question that Adam uh, that, that God asked. And it's found in verses 11 and, and 12. He, he says this, Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man replied, The woman you gave to be with me, she gave me some fruit and, and the tree, and I, I ate it. And, and so, how about you? 
okay? The man was following the woman and blaming the woman. And, and who are we listening to? Who makes the decisions in our life? Well, here's, here's the truth. We do many times. Our God nature and our sinful nature, they battle. But is your sinful nature leading you down the wrong path, down the wrong road? Sometimes it can be others. And it's very true. Those who are your friends will guide your lives in many ways. Sometimes it is the, it is the crowd that guides us the wrong direction. And we can jump in and follow the crowd. But God clearly asks, who are you listening to? Who told you you were naked? Why did you eat from the fruit? Who, who talked you into that? What happened? It's easy to blame our brothers, right? It's easy to blame our sisters or, or somebody else. That's very natural for us. It goes all the way back to, to, the, to the first sin that, that others were blamed. But the truth of the matter is that we are responsible for our own sins. And others can take us the wrong road. The crowd can sure make us think differently. But who are you listening to? My wife, Sherry, uh, retired from Luther Public Schools in, in the middle of May. And uh, she desired for us to go on a trip last weekend and take, take the grandkids and and. Our sons and daughter-in-law went. That didn't matter if they went, just the grandkids. <laughs> we were happy all of them went. And, and we got there, and we got there to Rogers Lake, just, just to the east of, I mean, uh, Beaver Lake, just to the east of Rogers, Arkansas. And man, we had a fun day. We went hiking and went to the park and uh, just, just got in. They had a hot tub there, and our little one called it the... the Hot pool. She called it the hot pool. She loved getting in the hot pool. We just had a great day, and we were looking forward to another day and a half. And we go to bed, and about two thirty in the morning, all of a sudden we heard this loud buzz from our phones and all of our phones. And here, here's what it said, as you'll see on the screen, and it says the National Weather Service tornado warning in this area. 2.45 a.m. Take shelter now in a basement or an interior room on the lowest floor of the sturdy building. And we had to decide who we were going to listen to at 2.45 in the morning. And so we couldn't get any TV stations. You know, Mike Morgan and David Payne wasn't available for us. And then they started talking about these counties having, having um, tor tornadoes there. We don't know the Arkansas counties, okay? We finally got on Facebook and saw this guy that looked like he was in the basement of his, hat, of his home with a, with a hat on telling us about storms. And finally we got on Facebook a newscast and we had to make some choices based on people we didn't know but they seemed logical. And right about 2.45 we hovered down into the bathroom and Beaver Lake and my son and other son and I got in a closet and we actually, for the first time in our life, heard the roar go by and the loudness and a tree fell on the house we were at and knocked electricity out. And Next morning we got up and it was Sunday morning, actually, forgive me, I forgot it was Sunday morning, you know, it was like, oh, what day is it, you know, and, but we were blocked in until 2.30 in the afternoon because of trees and We have to decide who we're going to listen to in life. We could have blew that off and thought they didn't know what they were talking about. But that sure wouldn't have been a wise thing to do. Can I urge you with all your heart to realize that God allows us to hear him through God's word, through prayer, through godly people, through situations, and we must choose who are we going to listen to. 
Are we going to listen to that popular person that really makes a good argument either on TV or on the internet or, or on X or whatever else? Are we going to listen to that or are we going to look at God's word and, and spiritually figure things out and try to do the right things? Are we going to trust people who we know who has wisdom or are we just going to hear some popular person say something and we say, well, obviously that has to be true. The Bible says this, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. That's what Jesus is saying. I love Psalms 25, 14. It's a little hidden verse in there. It says, the Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. He promises us that when we seek God, he will be found. No, it doesn't say turn left here and go straight here. But God gives us a clear path. He asks us the same question. Where are you? Who are you listening to? And finally, he asks asks the question, what have you done? Look back at verse 14 through 19. Young people, your parents ask you that question too, don't they? Verse 14 says, So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you've done this, you are cursed more than any livestock, any more than any wild animal. What had they done? What they had done is up in verses 11 and 12. He says, Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree that I commanded you? The man replied, I eat from the tree because of the woman. So who are you? listening to and what have you done what have they done here were they eating from the fruit man was following woman was blaming woman he was listening to his sinful nature over and over again that can happen in our life and we must choose to realize what we've done what they've done is they listen sometimes we choose to say I've done nothing wrong yeah I'm not wrong sometimes we'll blame it on somebody else I've done nothing wrong and sometimes we'll choose to say that I have sinned I confess to God or I confess to other people I have sinned over and over what have I done well he made me do it I've done nothing or I've sinned friends hear this God is not looking for perfection or sinlessness He is looking for repentance and honesty. If he was looking for perfection or sinlessness, we'd we'd be history. He's looking for repentance and honesty. He gives Adam a covenant in verses 14 through 19, all the way through through 24, an Adamic covenant. And he places restrictions on, on the women and on the serpent and on the man and Serpent would reach his final doom. The the woman would have sorrow, motherhood, the man's leadership. The man would have hard labor to gain from the earth. So sin does bring results. He is sharing that sin brings uh, results. But he also protected them in verses 21 through, through 24. It says, The Lord God made clothing from skins, For the man and his wife, and he clothed them. What does that tell us, church? God's provided for us clothing. It's Jesus. By his blood and by his death for us, we are covered. On top of that, he gets them out of the garden. Because if they wouldn't have got out of the garden and they would have ate of the fruit, they would have been in that misery forever. So even though they sinned, God still covered them in protection and he gave them a way out. Where are you? Who are you listening to? What have you done? The Bible says, he who had no sin became sin for us so we may become children of God.
story of a little boy who loved playing baseball and as a young boy, early on, Pee Wee Baseball, he got up and he hit a home run over the fence. And the proud father stood up and, and yelled, that's my boy. And, but a few weeks later, he struck out to end the game. And the father looked at him and said, you're not my son. My son doesn't, doesn't strike out. And he got to high school and... He was valedictorian as he walked across the line. The, the, the father stood up in the stands and yelled, that's my son, that's my son. But two years later, he, he flunked out of college because of poor choices and study habits. And the father looked him in the eye and said, you're not my son. My son doesn't flunk college. But he gets a good job, and he raises up in the industry, and he, 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 he does really well. And the father goes to a banquet, and he says to him, man, you're my son. I'm so proud of you. And, and no fault of the son. The company goes bankrupt, and he loses all. And the father says, That's not, you're not my son. Our God never tells us we're not his son. On those days that we teach in vacation Bible school and we see children come to the Lord, he's our Savior and God. And on the days that we can barely breathe and keep our head above, above sin and we're struggling, he still loves us and he still pursues us. He still calls us. He still asks us those questions. And he still tells us to come home. The same God that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead is the same God that wants to raise up our lives right now, wherever we're at. Would you pray with me? Every head bowed and every head closed. And God was offering Adam and Eve an invitation. He was offering an invitation to them in the garden. To come back to me and what have you done and he offers us that same invitation it starts with giving our life to Jesus our Savior our Lord we can never be good enough but the good news my friends is God is still pursuing you if you're here today and you understand and you hear and you know God's calling you to be saved. You can't be bad enough that you can't be saved. What do you do? Get honest with God. Repent of your sins. Tell Him you're sorry. Ask Him to save you and rescue you and take your life. I'll be here. Chris and Jeff will be here. And man, come tell us that in just a, just a moment. Church, maybe you're a believer. You are a believer. But you haven't been listening to God. You know it. Nobody else does, but you know it. Maybe this morning you just need to come to these steps and pray, or you need to sit during the invitation and pray, or you need to come to one of us and just say, man, I, I just need help to pray, to follow God. Our same God loves us. He never forsakes us. Would you stand your feet and let me pray? God calls you to join this church or call to special service. We'll be here also. God, as we're about to sing just as I am, God, I thank you that, that we come to you right now just as we are. And you still pursue us. You still look for us. You still chase us. You're still for us. Call us hard, God. May your Holy Spirit work. Bless this time of response. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, thank you for joining us online today. We hope that the Lord spoke to your heart through this message. If you would like to speak to someone today about a decision you feel led to make or for someone to pray with you, 
please call our church offices. We have somebody that would love to talk with you. For more information about Chisholm Heights, please check out our website at chbcmustang.org. We hope that you will join us again in person or online next week.